I'm Lee, and this is NASA Now. It's all systems go for Space Shuttle Endeavor to lift off one last time. And what's it really like to sit at the console in the Launch Control Center during countdown? We're going to take you there. That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. <laughs> Just one day after Discovery returned from its last mission, Space Shuttle Endeavour rolled out to launch pad 39A in preparation for its launch. Like Discovery, this is Endeavour's last scheduled flight. The six astronauts will deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, Micrometeoroid Debris Shields, and other spare parts to the International Space Station during its 14-day mission. Hey now, let's take a look at the past. It's a space shuttle tradition that's full of beans. Every single successful space shuttle launch has been followed by a meal of beans and cornbread. It started out when test director Norm Carlson brought in a crock pot of beans to feed his team after the very first launch of STS-1 in 1981. Today, NASA says that 227 liters, or 60 gallons, of beans are prepared for every launch. So what's it really like to sit at the console in the Launch Control Center during countdown? Here to tell us is Guidance Navigation and Flight Controls Engineer George Hatcher. My name is George Hatcher. I'm a Guidance Navigation and Flight Controls Engineer. One of the most exciting parts of my job is sitting on the console in the Launch Control Center in what we call the firing room during the countdown. And I didn't really understand as a kid why you would need a countdown for a space vehicle. Why can't you just get it out there, make sure everything's good, and press a button? And the reason is because so many things have to come together. Not only are you loading it with millions of gallons of ultra cold fuel and oxidizer. There's almost no way to describe how cold this stuff is, except to say that it's only a few degrees away from absolute zero. We're also powering up the fuel cells that sit in the bottom of the cargo bay. We're powering up the individual electronic systems. We're getting the gyros and the inertial measurement units um, up and running. So each one of these individual components has to be powered on. We have to make sure that it's healthy, and then it has to stay healthy while we pile everything else on. So it's a three-day process. All of the systems have to be perfect before we take off. What we're doing when we're sitting there looking at the computer screens is making sure that all the GNC systems are healthy and 100% functional. We make sure that nothing happens to the vehicle, we don't have any issues with ice or foam, because once you lift off, you can't turn off the SRBs. You're riding at least 72 seconds on those things, and for the most part, we hope for a successful eight or nine minute ascent into space. We have the capability up until about 31 seconds before liftoff, when we send the entire system over to the ground launch sequencer that controls the last 31 seconds of countdown and automatically aborts it. Up to that point, if we see something on our computer screens that isn't working, we have procedures so that we can fix things. If we decide we can't fix it in time, that's when we have a launch scrub. As you get down towards T minus nine minutes and start counting down, things start to quiet down. You're not gonna hear all the radio channels at once. You're not gonna have to try to parse out signals from individual people. In the last 15 seconds or so, there's not a sound. You could hear a pin drop. Everybody's on the edge of their seat because they know six. that six seconds before T0, those main engines are going to light up to make sure they all come up to 100% thrust before we blow those bolts, the eight bolts that hold the SRBs down, light the SRBs from the rocket that sits up in the nozzle. It's a rocket to start a rocket and send that thing into space. So it's quite an experience and it's something that I feel very privileged to be part of a small group of people that puts it together. Did you know that Endeavour was named through a national competition involving elementary and secondary school students? 
They were asked to select a name based upon an exploratory or research sea vessel. Endeavour was named after a ship captained by 18th century British explorer James Cook. Now it's time to check out what's up. Check out this image from the journey home. The Space Shuttle Discovery is seen from the International Space Station as the two orbital spacecraft accomplish their separation on March 7th. During a post-undocking fly-around, the crew of each vessel photographed the other craft. Teachers, here's your chance to turn your students into spacecraft structural engineers using the Engineering Design Challenge Spacecraft Structures Content Module. Your students will attempt to design a launch structure strong enough to withstand the load of a launch to orbit three times with a one kilogram mass. You can find the module on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we'll get ready to celebrate Earth Day. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.